welcome. Welcome to Bay Focus. Thank you for tuning in today. Always honored when you do two ministries today again here in the Central Florida area. Um, and we're going beyond just Tampa uh, today, too, in St. Pete. Our, our, in just a moment, we're going to talk with Positive Impact uh, Worldwide Ministry based in St. Pete, but also we're going to be talking with a little bit later in the show, Bikes for Christ out in the Plant City, Dover area, based out of, uh, but, but working in four different counties here and beyond uh, here in our area and what they do to help people that need transportation. You want to stay tuned and see if there's a way you can help these ministries today. But we're going to start with Positive Impact Worldwide back to update us. This is a ministry we've had on over the years of, of Bay Focus. And we're always honored to have the co-founder of this ministry, Carolyn Brubaker, with us, Thank who's uh, founded this ministry with her husband, Jay. We're going to show in just a moment a picture of the two of you. Um, but along with, with you today came your, your daughter, Karen. Karen Ray, who uh, is also known to our viewers for positive impact and also her own organization, the Balanced Life Planner, working to help people become balanced in their lives, which really works well with positive impact. I love the yes, word positive no. <laughs> um, with that, but you work together in ministry. And Carolyn, I want to start with you. Um, first of all, uh, let's just go ahead and bring up the picture. Uh, and you tell us about your husband, Jay, and how you guys uh, founded this, this uh, ministry. Awesome. So great, great pictures of, there you are. He's a law enforcement background, yes, police is. officer too. So yeah. Yes. Well, we uh, were so blessed to be able to receive the Martin Luther King Humanitarian Award that was given us, uh, to us in 2017. And I'm the most blessed woman on earth to have this awesome man of God uh, to work with. Yeah. And there's the real you, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's, like, that's the love real. Love the beach uh, shot, yeah. As we live close to the beach, as you yeah. know, in St. Petersburg. We just had to have a photo op I love with it. our shirts on. I saying, love it. Come on down to St. Pete. Yeah, Let's I love work it. Together. I absolutely love it. Well, tell our tell our viewers what actually a positive impact does and what your your vision to start this. Well, Darlene, I used to help with medical missions overseas and. Of course, our primary focus uh, was for children in orphanages. But when I came back from China, God spoke to me and said, St. Petersburg is your mission field. I never realized that one in four children go to bed hungry in our area. With my mother being a orphan child that was raised by her grandparents, I realized that it makes a great disparity on families when they take in extra children. And so my heart is to see uh, people have fresh fruit and vegetables and not live eating out of a can. Yeah, okay, and you guys do this through food distribution. Tell yes, us about, do. if you have a program, I think it's called Pop, Drop, and Drive. Yes, Tell every it, single Saturday we have a Pop, Drop, and Drive event. And what that means is pop your trunk, drive through, we'll drop groceries into it, and you can drive away. And wow. everyone so is welcome, and there are no questions asked. And every single Saturday we have several hundred cars that come through, and we are able to and provide where do you do this groceries. At? At Tangerine Plaza, and you can go to positiveimpact.org, and that event is uh, spotlighted on the home page of the website. And do people need to sign up for this to come, or does it just you can come? You don't have to register, or you do not have to register for our grocery food distribution event. Okay. Um, just show so up. Just show up. That's awesome. Yes. Let's show some pictures of this uh, that we have right right here. Tell us what we're seeing. This is actually on the corner of 18th Avenue South and 22nd Street South. We are getting groceries together in boxes to be able to put into trunks. That uh, We received a letter from Feeding Tampa Bay saying that the first 12 months of COVID, we were able to provide enough groceries to have 475,000 meals prepared. So uh, every Saturday we do this, and it's from about 9.30 to 12. This we, is uh, an event that we're doing, working with children, having children to know that they are loved and appreciated, not only filling their tummy, but letting them interact with one another is so important. 
So you do these events at different times, right? We do. We have fall festivals. We have spring flings. We have back-to-school events where we provide backpacks and other school supplies to children in our community. We do haircuts. We uh, do fingernail polish. So um, we love being able to love on the children in our community and uh, meet needs. Yeah, you know what? You guys do so much in your church as well. So you you are you're there for the community as a lighthouse um, for the gospel. Um, Karen, let me throw this to you because you handle the business side of this. This is all all the different things you guys are doing. It's such a huge undertaking. How do you how do you do this? Do you have partners in ministry? What do you do? Yes, we have um, many volunteers that work along with us to make this possible. And we certainly could always use more volunteers yeah. to link arms with us. And we can have friends and neighbors and school groups and church groups to come in and help us uh, distribute the groceries on Saturdays. That's a big job that we do. Yeah. And then also people give of their financial resources to make yeah. it possible for us to be able to provide the backpacks, for instance, right, to right. the children. It yeah. takes up. Does it go without saying that the pandemic just made this so much need greater? We, have you seen it slow down or yeah. you still have the need? No, we've seen actually an increase. Wow. At least two thirds. It's been absolutely unbelievable. Wow. We are giving away right around 25,000 pounds of groceries per week. We, um, we give to different things with being able to help foster families. Yes. You know, when I love that you guys do foster that. families take in children that are in distress. And so we want to lift that financial burden from foster families to be able to buy provide food for them. We also cook for 150 homeless every week that we give out. We also give to our um, fire, firefighters and, wow. and uh, we take food to the um, fire stations to let them give it to their local community. Oh my gosh, I love that. You know what, let's take a look here. We have, we have a video clip that just shows us all of this in action. Let's take a look. Okay, that gives you a little bit of a look at what happens and all the people that, that they are reaching with this grocery giveaway. Karen, um, we were talking just before we went to the video on, on how today's world has just made the need so much greater. Tell us, tell us how, how this has impacted. Well, the need has always been great. And then with COVID, the need became even yeah. greater. And then with what's happening in our economy right now, with the price of gas going up yeah. and the price of people's rent going up, um, yeah. the, the need is even greater. And yeah. so this is one area that we can help. We can help uh, alleviate uh, the financial burden of families having to buy groceries for themselves. We, uh, it, it doesn't matter where a person has come from, what the, their economic status is, um, everyone's stress to the max it right now. Everyone. It does yes. affect everyone. So um, yeah. again, just uh, no questions asked. Show up on Saturday, let us put some fresh groceries you know, in your trunk. There's probably people coming that have never done this before in their life, never Absolutely. been in this position. You know, there's been so much that has changed. And, you know, you mentioned one thing. Um, There's just some stats that came out this past week, how Tampa Bay is one of the top areas in this nation for rent increases. Mm -hmm. It's not a great distinction to have. Not it. But the rental situation, and particularly where you are, 
St. Pete has just skyrocketed um, in, in that area with trying to find affordable housing and different thing. Yes. So you guys are strategically located, and we know yes, God knows where to put, put people in ministries. But how can our viewers, give me some specific ways that our viewers can help you. Right now, Tarlene, we obviously are growing substantially, and we need housing we have what i mean housing housing for the ministry we need places where we can expand having groceries delivered to and to be able to have more groceries and have the space for it so we need that growth so we need supporters we need financial supporters if any one of you have a yeah. heart yeah. for being able to reach out to the children I don't believe any child should go to bed hungry. I don't think any family should have food disparity. You and I may be able to say that we, where are we going to eat at tonight or what are we going to eat tonight? There's people that can't even say, I have rice to eat tonight. That's not okay. You and I can work together hand in hand being God's hands and feet and see that people do not have food disparity. Right. We need you. We need your financial support. You can go to our website. There's a safe way of being able to donate. Also, we need you to volunteer. Please bring your group. We have school children that are helping us. We have people in the neighborhood that are coming out and helping. Also, churches, rotaries, civic clubs, Get on our website and sign up to be a volunteer, and you you just come and be a part of it. It's okay. such a blessing. Well, I can't think it of a better way is. to end this segment, but we're not totally done yet. Thank you both for coming on. We're okay. going to show you right now. You're going to see Karen again on, on video. Some of the testimonies of people that have been impacted and what positive impact has meant to them. And then we'll be back with more of Bay Focus. Stay tuned. Hi, my name is Karen. I'm the Executive Director of Positive Impact. Positive Impact's mission is to connect with and serve the needs of individuals in our community and beyond for the purpose of impacting lives for Christ. And I'd like for you to get a glimpse of the impact that has been made. Hi, my name is Denise. I've um, passed by these people quite a few times. But then I don't know, I just, I took and I came and I see what they do and they are good people and I really appreciate what they do. Um, coming from a life of uh, drugs and alcohol abuse um, and, and living in sin, it, it showed me that Christ leading in that washes that away and it allows me to, to serve. And, and, and without you all help, we wouldn't be able to eat. I appreciate it so much, and you know what? That's what we're here this for. Two, this two shall pay. Amen. And we're going to do it together. Amen. Positive Impact Worldwide is a nonprofit organization based out of St. Petersburg, Florida. We invite you to serve alongside us and make a positive impact in the city and beyond. Well, if you can help Positive Impact Worldwide, I'm sure they would greatly appreciate anything you can do to assist them. We're going to change direction now, and we're going to feature another ministry that is doing an incredible, incredible work um, called Bikes for Christ. He's been on the show uh, before, but it's been a while. And we want to welcome back the founder of this ministry, Pat Simmons. Thank you for coming back. Thank you for having me. Awesome to have you. Um, you know, and... Before we get into, um, and we're going to show you all, stay tuned, we're going to show you a nice video as well of everything they did last year. Um, but we have viewers that probably go, Bikes for Christ? What does that mean? Tell us about what you do and a little bit how you got it started and why. Um, well, as far as the start, the start really goes back to 2015 when I took a mission trip to Nicaragua and I saw, I saw real poverty. And my heart was changed. I came back here and I wanted to get involved uh, doing something. I didn't know what I wanted to do, so I got involved with several different ministries that did feedings and worked directly with those in need. And about six months into that, I figured out that you can help these people with transportation. So I was able to combine my love of cycling 
was something that actually had purpose to help out people in need. Yeah. So it was your own personal love of cycling that made you think of this too. And then you see, you know, you don't think about how, um, you always think of people need cars, but sometimes bikes is what they need. Absolutely. I mean, if that's all that you have, then that's what you, that's what you have to use. A rusty yeah. bicycle can be the difference between, you know, putting food on the table and not putting food on the table, being able to get to work and being able yeah. to earn a paycheck to be able to do that. Yeah. All right. So how do you do this? How do you get the bikes and, and how do you distribute them? Well, the bicycles are all donations. We have a shop, so we're able to fix up the uh, bicycles. And the way that we uh, then get the bicycles to the individuals is in, the need, in need is we work with organizations and we depend upon their case managers to do a vetting process and determine whether a bicycle could be life changing for that individual. Um, so, an example, some of the organizations that we work with range from smaller nonprofits up to um, your larger, more well-known nonprofits, like here in the Tampa Bay area, you've got Metropolitan Ministries, and then on a larger scale, you've got St. Vincent de Paul, Catholic Charities, Salvation Army, yeah. very recognizable names. Yeah. And you, um, well, that's a great resource. I mean, they would know. They would absolutely yeah. know who, who needs them. And, and how many different counties are you in? What do you work with? In the parts of four counties. So we cover all of Hillsborough and Pinellas, and then into parts of Pasco and into parts of Polk County. Okay, so do you have an army of volunteers? How do you do this? <laughs> I mean, seriously, you're one guy. Yeah. This takes we, some we, people we, to we, assist. We've got some great volunteers yeah. from the guys that work in the shop to guys that do pickups and deliveries to volunteers that help us with our uh, just other things like outreach events and, okay. and what stuff do you do like with that. that. What are your events? What, explain how your events work. Uh, well, this week we have the quarterly uh, Sheriff's Department, Hillsborough County Sheriff's Department uh, homeless outreach that they do. So we'll have a booth there and our volunteers will be telling people about how they can get a bike. You know, basically any of the, any of the organizations represented in that room, if they're receiving assistance from one of those organizations, and that case manager feels like a bicycle could be life-changing, they can place an order for that individual. Wow, I love that. Now you've, um, and you're going to need to say it because I've neglected to write these down, so you are going to need to say it, but you've also had some very distinguished honors uh, given to you that has just been a, a wonderful um, way to, to um, be acknowledged by the community and what you're doing. Tell us, tell us what some of those have been. Um, well, uh, we, we've re received honors from several chambers. I mean, we were um, winner of Small Business of the Year a couple years ago with the Valrico Fishhawk Chamber. We were nonprofit of the year with Plant City Chamber. We were finalists for business, uh, Small Business of the Year with the Riverview Chamber this past year. But by far, our largest achievement uh, was winning the WEDU Be More Empowered Award for small nonprofit making the biggest impact here in the I Tampa love Bay that. area. What a witness for what you're doing. Yeah. I mean, it's like, it's like you say, you know, you have it clearly in the title um, that, you, that, you know, this is a ministry that, uh, an organization, because you, you cover, you work with ministries, you work with just nonprofits uh, as well as humanitarian organizations, but you have the word Christ, obviously, or Christ follower in that, which leads me to my next question. What are the ways that you're able to share the love of Christ? Well, obviously by giving a bike, but there's some other opportunities as well. Right. So with every bicycle we give out, there's a couple things that go along with it. Number one, lights that we get from DOT that will make the bicycle nighttime compliant. But, uh, the, and then we've been giving out backpacks that we received because of a con uh, convention that was canceled back in wow. 2020 because of COVID. And we yeah. were the recipient of a bunch of backpacks. And in that backpack, you get a Gospel of John. So we want the individual to know that we love them, God loves them, and if they don't know Christ as their Savior, that they'll open that up and they'll find a way to Him. Oh, I love that. I absolutely love that. Um, do you have a, I, I always like to personalize this in, uh, a little bit. You, are there a couple of stories or a couple of people that stand out to you that where this was just life-changing for them to have a bike? One of the most... Uh, recent stories from last year and you'll, you'll see them at the, the beginning of the video that, that we yeah. have 
Yeah, there were two, two uh, young ladies that are here on visa. I forget which country they're from, but they're attending HCC, Plant City campus. And they had bicycles, but they basically w rode their bicycles to the bicycles fo fell apart. And so we were able to provide them with bicycles, and I, I was the one that dropped off the bicycles that day. And I knew where I was dropping the bicycles off, and they lived. And I know where HCC campus was, so I stuck that in the GPS just to see the distance in four miles. So it's wow. four miles there, four miles back. Wow. I mean, so you're giving them a way to get to school and back quicker. You're actually making them a lot safer, too, because young ladies probably don't need to be out there walking Right. The streets. Right. So, um, you know, just wow. to know that we're helping these two that have come here from another country trying to get an education and improve their lives, I mean, that, that's powerful. It's got to be so, so rewarding. All right. So how, how then are the best way, because I'm thinking that when you look at the chain of events that has to occur, you have to first get bikes. You know, you have that it starts there. But how can our viewers partner with you? What are some of your greatest needs? Um, well, as always, you know, like you say, bicycles. We need bicycle donations, rideable or as close to rideable as possible. Uh, predominantly men. Men are the problem child. <laughs> so uh, at least you're admitting. We, we, yeah, I'll admit it. <laughs> so we need men's bikes uh, mostly, um, and then also, uh, of course, monetary donations because yeah. we are a business and have an overhead just like any other business. Yeah. And one thing that we're working on to save towards right now is a new shop because uh, we outgrew our shop probably two and a half years ago. I mean, wow. it's, it's full. If we're able to get a much, much larger shop, then we can also uh, start some new programs too, like bringing in individuals, for instance, students that are looking for community service hours, we can have a program for them. Uh, and we can have a program for people that have, have to earn their community service hours because they've messed up along right, the way. Right, right. But it, 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 it will really help, help us to be able to do a lot more in the community and get a lot more bikes out. Did you, when you, when you started this and, and had the vision to do this, did you envision how this was just going to grow and multiply? You just, you just, knew, you just knew that God had called you to do this, that the need was so great. Yeah, God's changed the direction a couple times. Yeah. You know, you just have to put your faith in Him. I mean, there, there were ideas that I had, but ultimately He's the one that's, he's the one that's driving everything. Yeah. So. Well, one of the things you do, too, um, is you're involved in even just in different organizations and different boards, different things that you participate in. Um, and are you in the conversation? I mean, you're dealing with people that, that are in need, needy families, homelessness, all this. Um, have you seen that this pandemic, the economy, everything has, has just made this even more? more yeah, it, it, it affected everything because when, when we were right in the middle of this, say the summer of 2020, that's when everybody, you know, had been told to stay safe at home. So they went out and they bought up every bicycle in sight. So that made donations for us extremely difficult because nobody wanted to donate at that time. Yeah. Still to this day, like so many other in industries, whether it's the automotive industry or it's the uh, appliance industry, yeah. you know, everybody's still waiting on parts. To st you know, so yeah. it's like you may have a bicycle and you have the frame and everything, but you're still waiting on the individual components to show up yeah. to be able to make the bike work the way it's yeah. supposed to. So, yeah, so that is affected. So it, it's, it's, it's still, it's ongoing. So it's ongoing. So, yeah, you, you definitely, you're, I hadn't even thought about that. You're part of the supply chain crisis. Right. Yeah. That's all, all part of that. Um, wow. Okay, well, we're going to go to a video in just a moment, but I want to say thank you, Pat. People can go to your website yes. to find out more, to contribute. Uh, if they want, even financially, Absolutely. Yes. to a donation, uh, whatever, um, and keep us posted on how things go. I know God is just opening more and more doors for you, so thank you for coming on the show today, and stay tuned, because you're going to look at a video now. We're going to show you um, a recap of the year 2021, and of everything that they did, probably not everything, <laughs> but a good look, good look at what happened with Bikes for Christ, uh, and I really hope this is a ministry that you can partner with and help. Let's take a look.
Well, I hope you can support Bikes for Christ. What an incredible organization to help them. And then also Positive Impact Worldwide Ministry in St. Petersburg. If you can do every, everything they're doing, if you can help them with all the food distribution, all the outreach that they're doing, I know they'd appreciate it. I want to thank you for tuning in. I'm always so glad you do every week. Keep Bay Focus in the loop on what's going on here in the Tampa Bay area. And we will see you next week. God bless you.